So you were talking about the evolution of the term white supremacy, racism, uh, all of those ideas. But the fact is white supremacy is not new. Um, the conservative values that you and many here wish to uphold, um, y'all kind of ignore the fact that this country was founded on the genocide of native indigenous peoples who were called primitive savages and murdered, massacred. Uh, racism and white supremacy is not a bipartisan issue. Uh, it's an American issue and one which we must all come to terms with. But if the American dream, which you were talking about, is that anyone can do anything and be anything that they want, uh, how can we support this kind of fanciful idea when the reality is that Native peoples and so many other marginalized groups um, through systemic economic barriers partly caused by the environment of our founding are left behind from that dream? So what's the question? Yeah. The question is... Um, I'll rephrase it. The question is, um, isn't it true that America was contaminated by white supremacy from the very beginning, and that the genocidal acts of white supremacy, like the displacement, relocation, and massacre of the Native Indians, uh, is uh, an American crime and not a partisan crime? Um, let me answer it this way. First of all, who were the people who took the American Indians off their ancestral lands, drove them further west, enslaved the ones who stayed, killed the ones who resisted? The answer, the Jacksonian Democrats of the 19th century. They did it. Now, now uh, what is the proof of this? This is very interesting. The proof of this weirdly enough, is Hitler himself. When Hitler was sitting in Landsberg prison, Hitler had a problem, and the problem was that he wanted Germany to be a superpower in the way that Britain and France were, the superpowers of Europe. And, uh, and Hitler was thinking, we have to do this through colonialism, because that's how the British and the French became powerful. The British run India, they run half of Africa, the French have colonies all over the world. Hitler thought, Germany needs to do that. But he realized, but there's nothing left to take. All the real estate on the planet has been sort of occupied. So how can Germany become a great power? And then Hitler realized. Andrew Jackson figured out how to do that in the United States. His formula was really simple. Drive the Indians off their land, kill the ones who resist, enslave the ones who remained. In other words, Jackson didn't have to leave his neighborhood. He performed genocide and colonialism right at home. And Hitler said, I got to do that. I got to take a page from the Jacksonian Democrats. I don't need to go hunting for India or Africa. I'm going to take the Poles, the Slavs, the Eastern Europeans, the Russians. I'm going to throw them off their land. If they resist, I'll kill them. If they stay back, I'll enslave them. I want every German to live on a farm. This is Adolf Hitler taking a page from the book of the Jacksonian Democrats of the 19th century. Now, this has been exposed very recently by the historian Timothy Snyder and others. But here's again, Hitler knows something that your textbooks have evidently not taught you, which is that this was a project of the Democratic Party to create white supremacy because Andrew Jackson stole that land. He gave it to, to settlers in exchange for their votes. He sold it at bargain basement prices, and so white supremacy becomes the foundational ideology of the Democratic Party, not just with regard to blacks, but also with regard to American Indians. So no, this is not a bipartisan issue, this is not an American tragedy. Remember, we fought a big civil war over issues like this. One bunch of Americans did really bad things, and another bunch of Americans, otherwise called Republicans, stopped them. So.